Hi, let's take a look inside one of these uh, professional industrial quality joysticks as seen in a previous mailbag episode and sent in by Mark R. Sadowski from Control Devices here in uh, Sydney. So thank you very much, Mark. Let's take a look at what makes one of these puppies tick. So Mark's included uh, two joysticks here. One is the uh, fully complete one, uh, complete with uh, interface and presumably has all the uh, circuitry fully functional inside the thing. And the other one is essentially uh, the same thing, but all stripped down so that we can take a look at the mechanicals. And he says that this one here is uh, most likely used in uh, the garbage trucks, which uh, come around and, um, you know, lift up your bins and haul them into the back. That'd be one of the industrial applications for one of these uh, puppies. Of course, you know, the buttons would do various things and they'd label them for a specific uh, purpose and they would operate the... Uh operate, you know, up, down, dump, rubbish, all that sort of stuff, or they could be used in uh, flight simulators or anything that requires a real top quality uh, joystick. Because these things, I mean, there's a lot of engineering which goes into that. And it's hard to really give you an insight as to how good this thing feels, but a real top quality, like, you know, a military style uh, grade joystick, for example, won't only just um, go like that in any direction. It'll have more movement in the four axes, like easier movement in the four axes like that than it does. You can actually push these like at any angle, but there's more force required to do that. So, you know, if you're flying a plane or something, you, you know, if you want it to go forward, you just push forward. You don't want it to go slightly off to an angle, you know, like that. So you want you know, the joy, I'm not sure of the correct term for that. I'm sure people will uh, scream at me. The joystick aficionados will scream at me. I know the term for that. Anyway, um, it is, yeah, it's, there's less resistance. So if you push it forward, it's naturally going to go forward. You need actually a fair bit of force to, to sort of move it over to one side and get that different angle. So, yeah, superbly engineered. They really are. Cost a fortune. And these buttons, Mark was telling me that uh, they used to be designed in the US. They used one from a US company, but they failed. Um, you know, just too much use, too many button presses. They weren't reliable enough. So they designed these ones themselves uh, here in Sydney at their uh, factory and they manufacture them here. They're a Hall Effect switch. So all it is is basically put in, there's, there's no actual contact in there. So basically all they're doing is putting a magnet beside a uh, Hall Effect uh, sensor, and these have up to 20 million operations. And yes, they have actually designed some uh, test jigs to actually uh, prove that and you know, pr actually test them out, push them 20 million times, and actually test the reliability of these things. Now, this mechanism here, however, does use standard, uh, well, you know, they're, they're going to be super high quality, but you can see the wipe contacts in there and as I move it you can see that arm swing across so just like say your range switch in your multimeter they've got the pads you can probably see uh, through the PCB there onto the other side those um, dual wipe uh, contacts of course dual wipe either side so they can uh, determine how uh, when these things have been moved so there's a lot of mechanical porn which goes into ensuring I mean we can you know we can tear this whole thing uh, down and see inside because it's there's a lot of a lot of engineering porn which goes into that as i said to give the uh the extra force required to go at the various angles ah oh, very nice and uh we have some unpopulated uh circuitry in here by the way all the mechanical stuff this is all uh, designed and made in the uk but all the rest of it all of the uh, uh pcbs and that uh, circuitry and everything else they're all done here in sydney so presumably all this uh like there'd be a micro on there and it gives um presumably a uh, proportional output um or you know some sort of decoded output and or uh, and or you know serial protocol custom interface for whatever um device you need so yeah, that's, you know, probably completely uh, customizable to the customer's requirements because these things basically aren't off the shelf pretty much. They're sort of, you know, more of your uh, design to the customer spec kind of thing. And aha, uh -huh, the PCB gives it away 4 to 20 milliamp times 2. That's a current loop output. So we'd get a proportional current output based on the movement of the uh, joystick. And they reason they use a current output instead of a voltage output 
because industrial applications typically got big long wiring harnesses and things like that. You don't want any interference. So a nice 4 to 20 milliamp industry standard current loop uh, output, proportional output, is exactly what you want for that sort of thing. So yeah, you can eliminate any uh, noise interference because it's relatively high current. It's not uh, you know a high impedance uh, voltage input. So it's a huge difference there. So no surprise that an industrial uh, unit has 4 to 20 milliamp current loop outputs on it. But yeah, I'm sure they could design it too. You know, they'd custom make this board to whatever requirements you wanted. And if you take that grommet off, aha, we can really see how they achieve this... Um, uh, you know, uh, less force required in one axis like that. You can see that they've got little uh, uh, milled uh, cutouts in there. So obviously in this, with the circular disc going in back and forth and left and right is much less force required than, as I said, going opposite like that because it's a higher up ridge like that. And of course, this being round, in here obviously just slides in that slot there real easy so it stays on target unless you really have to put a bit of force to move it over that is terrific stuff and of course the uh the force is determined by your spring on there so if the customer said oh look that's a bit that joystick's a bit stiff i don't like a stiff joystick now, that's a bit dodgy give me one that's a bit soft um then they can just change the spring in there and uh give the customer whatever they want. So all this physical base inside here is manufactured in the UK, as I said, by Penny and Gillies Control Limited, made in the old Dart. There you go. And yeah, they're all individually serial numbered because, you know, these things cost a lot of money and, uh, you know, you really want to trace them. So, um, but as I said, the, uh, the rest of the electronics and that stuff inside is done by control devices here in Sydney. If we take that board assembly out here, you can see the dual wipe uh, contacts under there. So there's two separate uh, circuits and ta-da! And check out the back side of the board here. Yes, it is a proportional uh, output, not just like a, like a four position output or something like that. Dead giveaway is this carbon trace over here like this. So one of those uh, dual wipe contacts there, these two pads, this one down here, here and here, they make contact. So one makes contact, of course, with uh, that main pad, which goes all the way across there. And the other goes onto this uh, variable resistance. Uh, well, it's a continuous resistance right across there. It's going to have a controlled resistance right across, but depending on the position, then you can actually uh, tap it off just like a regular pot. So there's your uh, three terminals. Here's your one terminal going across there, and there's either side of your pot like that, and they might even be tapping off from the center as well there. And let's measure the end-to-end -end resistance of that. There we go, about 3.6K or thereabouts, and that'll be fairly linear across that arc like that. It's fairly evenly distributed resistance across there. It's based on the uh, the uh, graphite or whatever material it is, and then um, the, you know, the controlled thickness as well. There'd be a lot of art in actually manufacturing those for the joystick. So, you know, I don't know who's actually manufacturing those, but, uh, you know, it'd be really top quality stuff. And we've got another one across here, which is a different axes but this doesn't look like it's used at all on this particular joystick with the uh, contacts anyway that one's around about uh, 500 ohms a piece it looks like that own we've got as I said we've got two contacts there and two contacts there so maybe they had something else up there for these uh, top contacts but these aren't used in this particular model so you've got one wiper across there and there as i said that'll be a regular potentiometer going back and forth with your center tap in there and then the other one goes between here and it's just a multi-position it, it detects whether or not it's the center and goes over there so that'll be depend whether or not you use that depends on your uh, system requirements and of course the carbon on there is going to be some sort of, uh, you know, graphite uh, base material. I'm not sure what it is uh, precisely, but it's going to want to be very special for this, uh, you know, really high-end industrial uh, military type application to get. You know, if you've got the con wiper continuously going across that, eh, it's not like a regular, you know, 10 cent 
pot you can buy from your local Tricky Dick store, it's going to be really high quality carbon on there. Bet your bottom dollar. And of course, they wouldn't just get that from any PCB manufacturer either. They would have had to you know, carefully selected and uh, qualified that particular PCB manufacturer to do that particular process that they wanted. And it probably costs a fortune. And of course, needless to say, the gold plating on there wouldn't be your standard one that you're going to get on your uh, $5 board from, um, you know, from your one hung low PCB manufacturer. That's going to be really top quality, super hard, super thick gold on there. Bet your bottom dollar again. And by the way, I know all about selecting the right type of button here. I used to work at uh, Australian Defence um, Industries and uh, working on military uh, stuff. And we were uh, doing simulators for the uh, simulator panels for the uh, Navy. And we had to, you know, we would spend like six months um, sourcing, selecting and testing and qualifying the right switch for the damn thing. I mean, that's why these military bloody projects are so expensive. They just, you know, like, the switch had cost, yeah, 500 bucks a bloody switch, but we'd spend uh, how many, uh, you know, $100,000 just selecting the damn thing, just in labour and red tape. And look at all these cast parts that they have to make. I mean, geez, you know, and these things would cost a fortune, and we're getting more down into the guts of, geez, you could use that in some sort of sci-fi movie, couldn't you? That's fantastic. I love that. Oh, anyway, we're getting down into it. And there's the money shot for you mechanical grease monkeys. Look at that. Fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, that is just, you know, a great work of mechanical engineering, you know, for such a simple function for a joystick. But, you know, to perfect it and get it right requires, you know, a lot of uh, design effort and a lot of, you know, precision machining and things like that to, you know, really separate the real top quality ones from just your junk ones for bloody gamer kitties. And you would think a part like that would be symmetrical, but it's not. There's a little pin in there which is designed to mate up with the hole down in there, so it goes in one orientation only, but it looks pretty darn symmetrical, but it ain't. And likewise for that part too, you'd think is symmetrical. Looks symmetrical, but no, nah, it's got a little key in there which uh, mates up with that so you can't mount it any other orientation. Bet your ass we're going to avoid that warranty. Yeah. And here is inside, presumably, a fully assembled one or a fully assembled customised, I don't know, it could be a prototype or a... Uh, Anything like that, I don't know. It wasn't certainly uh, brand new out of their stock. They just uh, gave me whatever they had uh, hanging around. So, yeah, that looks like it's just uh, possibly just uh, jury rigged, maybe for test purposes, something like that. And unfortunately, it looks like the board is actually riveted on there. Check it out. It's not actually screwed in, completely riveted on. So, yeah, I'm not sure there's anything of value on the bottom of the board in there and by the looks of these uh these connectors on the side yeah i'd say it's some sort of uh test unit so yep let's uh, nothing interesting on there let's take a squeeze at these buttons if we can to get at those buttons it looks like we can uh remove the silicon in here or get through there somehow and um, get the screws off and uh access those and we've popped that out but unfortunately wah, it's potted so we can't get to see the uh, hall effect sensor in there but as i said it's just a hall effect sensor pro probably on a little board with a push button and a spring which then pushes a magnet in front of the uh, hall effect sensor and there's going to be a little board on there it's got a pnp uh, output and mark says this is uh, rated for 20 million operations data sheet says uh, 10 million but yeah they probably get Get a lot more than that probably very conservatively uh, rated so yeah they're manufactured by control devices here in Sydney they're their own Hall effect uh, sensor because mechanical wipe contacts you know to get 10 or 20 million operations out of those eh, it's a bit dodgy so yeah so Hall effect with no metal to metal uh, contact all electronic effectively is the best way to get that reliability then you've only got to pretty much rely on the spring and that's uh, pretty much it so as long as you can get the spring to do 
those uh, 10 or 20 million operations, then Bob's your uncle. And they're all uh, ESD protected as well as you'd expect in an industrial application like this. And just a small thing, like putting heat shrink over the uh, wiring which goes through the cavity there, just so it doesn't rub against the inside. I know there's no movement on here once you've physically installed it, but it just shows attention to detail. I really like it. And of course, you've got rubber O-ring seals as well, because, well, you can't have the operator, you know, spilling their coffee all over these buttons and, well, accidentally having that drone shoot somebody. No, you want to do it on purpose. If we have a brief look at the data sheet here for the Penny and Gillies uh, JC6000 multi-axis joystick controller designed for demanding operator control applications in off-highway uh, vehicles and other man-machine interfaces where reliability, blah, 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 is super important. So uh, you can get Hall Effect or uh, Potentiomic uh, sensing, which we've uh, got in here. We've got the uh, potentiometers in there, as we saw. And uh, you can get single or dual-axis uh, control, high strength lever with superb proportional control that's probably the word i was looking for proportional axes uh kind of control and uh they're ip66 and the hall effect one's actually supplied by them but uh they've got up to 15 million operations but as i said uh the hall effect switches in these ones the joystick switches on the top they're actually uh manufactured uh, locally here in sydney not by this company so um but the potentiometer ones um they've got more than 5 million operations so fantastic reliability on that that's just awesome and you can get uh, dual output ones as well for like a uh, failure detection safety critical applications all that sort of jazz and of course they'll design whatever the hell you want so there you have it that's a brief look inside one of these professional uh, industrial type joysticks and it's you know it's quite a lot of uh, really nice engineering which goes into these things and well if you have to ask the price you probably can't afford it you gamer kiddies so these are designed for real industrial high reliability applications and pretty much sort of you know custom uh, design for your particular needs so thank you very much to Mark from uh, Control Devices here in Sydney for uh, uh, letting us have a look inside these beautiful joysticks and oh man just love a good stiff joystick that's just fantastic catch you next time